credit cards. I think credit cards is one of the most searched topics on YouTube. And I know it's one of the most asked questions when it comes down to my clients and that type of thing about how credit cards work, how they can get approved, what's the best credit cards, um, how to get the easy approval credit cards. There's so many questions concerning credit cards. So today in this video, I am going to talk about what is a credit card, how they work, and what you can do to not get denied in the future. So let's get into it. Welcome or welcome back to Star Knows Credit. My name is Star Carter and on this channel I talk personal financial education. So if that sounds like that is something that you're interested in, please consider being a subscriber. Make sure you guys cut on your notification, that way you don't miss out on a video. And give this one a thumbs up, that way it get pushed out to more viewers that might want to see this content as well. Thank you so much. Let's get into the content today. So what is a credit card? Well, the best definition that I was able to find was through a website that I use periodically to find definitions, and that is Investopedia. So let's pull up what their definition is of a credit card. So Investopedia says that a credit card is a thin rectangular piece of plastic or metal issued by a bank or financial services company that allows cardholders to borrow funds to pay for goods and services with merchants that accept cards for payment. Now, I like that definition, but I also want to add this part because this is the financial aspect of it. A credit card is a personal short-term loan. I want you to always keep that in mind. A credit card is a short-term loan. It is a revolving line of credit. So what that means is whatever line of credit they give you, so whatever they approve you for, whatever your credit limit is, you allow to continue to continue to continue to use that line of credit as long as you're paying it back off or paying it back enough that you have some limit available. So you're allowed to continue to use that available limit over and over again as you pay it off. The difference between that and like a personal loan is that a personal loan is closed in. So whatever you get that personal loan, that personal loan will probably come with a cheaper interest rate It'll also come with a set term. So a term is how long it's going to take you to pay that loan back. So they might say, okay, we're going to lend you $5,000 and we're going to give you a term of 24 months to do it. And we're going to break your payments down so that you will be then paid that off in those said 24 months along with the interest. But with a credit card, they can give you that same $5,000 loan and you could go and spend the $5,000 today. And if you have $5,000, you better have $5,000 if you spend that much to pay it right back off, then that $5,000 come right back to you. But with a personal loan, once you pay that off in 24 months, you would have to refinance the loan or redo a loan or reapply for a loan in order for you to get $5,000 back again. So that's why the credit card is such a more convenient way to use credit because you can keep the credit card forever and ever as long as the bank is issuing the card and as long as you have not defaulted on the card for them to close that account out. So some people have had credit cards for 30, 40, and even 50 years. They've had one credit card forever and ever. Like I said, as long as the bank is still issuing that card and as long as they are in good standing with the card and with the bank. Credit cards are short-term loans personal loans, but they're also high risk loans. So because they are high risk loans, because they're not backed by anything. Now, another form of personal loan is like your car loan. A car loan is backed by something. It's the car itself is collateral. If you buy a home, the house itself is collateral. So if you default on the car, they can repossess the car. If you default on the house, they can foreclose on the house. But when you don't pay a credit card back, then usually they don't have anything back in that money. So they usually end up suing you in order to get that money back because they don't have anything that they can actually come and take from you because that's not how credit cards work. So you're looking at a very high risk type of credit instrument that usually will come with a higher interest rate because the default rate usually is high. Credit cards are great because as I was saying, they provide a beautiful convenience that you can pay for your goods and your services today 
even if you do not have the money today. So you might like today that I'm recording this video is Tuesday. You might not get paid till Friday, but if you got the good old credit card, you could go out and use the credit card today to pay for groceries, to pay for gas and to pay for all those things that you may need while you waiting on payday to come. And you can use that card now for your convenience. But the caveat, the big caveat to that is you want to pay it off. A lot of people get in credit card debt and credit card trouble is because they don't pay it off. A lot of people get in the cycle of living above their means with credit cards, especially when you have higher limit credit cards. It's kind of hard to really live above your means, you know, like really balling out of control when you have like thousand dollar limits and five hundred dollar limits. But when you start getting above two thousand, three thousand, all the way up to ten and twenty and thirty thousand dollars, man, I'm telling you, the temptation, the temptation is very, very strong. I talked about my debt addiction, so I'm gonna link that video. But that's one of the things that get people trapped in credit cards. It's because it's so easy to just pull out the plastic that is not your money. This is the bank's money or a financial company's money. This is their money. So you don't have the same attachment to it than if you were to pull out your debit card that is hooked to your money. You're more cautious. You're more, you're going to spend with a little bit more uh, mindfulness because it's your money. But when you got the good old plastic card that's not your money and then they t entice you with a uh, you spend a thousand dollars and your minimum made but twenty five dollars. You like, wow, I could spend a thousand dollars and all I got to pay is twenty five dollar minimum. I'm sold. <laughs> so that's how a lot of people get caught up in credit card debt because they don't understand the repercussions of not paying the card right back off and living above their means and the difference in compounding interest that when you carry a balance that interest compounds from month to month to month and that's how people can be in credit card debt for years decades you would be surprised i did a video on the the true cost of a high limit credit card where i pull up a, a credit card calculator and it shows you where if you were to have twenty thousand dollars in a maxed out credit card and all you were paying with three hundred and twenty dollars that it would take you like 20 years to pay it off and you'd be then paid like sixty thousand dollars in interest so it's a real thing i'm gonna link that video as well because a lot of people find that they get in credit card debt when they're not looking. Credit card debt is one of those things that sneak up on you because as you're using a card, you're going to different stores, you're buying this, you're buying that. It could be simple as just buying your regular stuff, but if you're not paying it back off, that's how folks get in trouble. Now, credit cards offer a lot of benefits as well. So uh, some of those benefits when it comes to even using a credit card is fraud protection. Majority, like 99% of your credit cards, especially if they're from a good issuing bank like American Express, Chase, Capital One, and stuff like that, they're going to have fraud protection built into the card. And I'm one of the ones that I use my credit card way more than I use my debit card because I know for sure that if my debit card gets hacked or somebody was to get a hold of my numbers and you know run up, I know the bank will assist me in trying to dispute and get the money back, but they're not gonna be as quick as if it was their money. If it's their money, they're gonna work a lot faster because here's the thing, if I dispute it on my credit card, I don't have to pay those charges until after their investigation, okay? So they're gonna be in a hurry to get that investigated because they're losing out on interest and they're losing out on the payment. I like to use my credit card just for that reason because of fraud protection. Also, your credit card can come with an extended warranty. So when you buy electronics, especially big ticket electronics like your, your computers and your laptops, like if you ever bought an Apple computer, then you know what I'm talking about. Some of those really expensive electronics and also it will give you an extended warranty for those things if they're damaged or you know sometimes you know when you just buy a product it might only have a year warranty but they will extend the warranty a lot of times on some of these credit cards so you got to check those benefits out as well a lot of them also come with travel protection like trip cancellation protection so say for instance somebody gets hurt and you got this trip book through your credit card 
your credit card might offer a trip cancellation where you will not lose that money on your airlines or on your hotels or something like that. That's another great benefit of having a credit card. Cell phone protection. Cell phone protection is another thing. You know, a lot of times when we buy these new iPhones and Samsungs and stuff like that, the cell phone company may have a insurance, but you may have to pay a deductible for that insurance and, and a monthly fee. But with your cell phone protection, as long as you're paying your bill every month with that said credit card, usually they will cover it up, up to $800, $1,000 of the purchase and you may not even have to pay a deductible and that's just for using the credit card to pay your bill every month. Sorry about that, that was the hooks. Back to the benefits. So we talked about the cell phone protection, cash back. So when you're using these credit cards, a lot of them give you cash back for just using the cards, depending on the, uh, the card issuer and the bank that is offering those rewards. Sometimes you can even get uh, cards that have 0% APR for uh, six all the way up to, I've even seen up to 24 months. So that's a very good thing too, especially if you know you're going to buy something big and you want that time to pay it back over time. That's the only time that these credit cards is, is a good time to carry a balance if you're going to have that 0% APR you know, period where you don't have to worry about paying any interest every month. But even that with a caveat, you still want to make sure that you're keeping your credit card utilization down below 30%, even if you are to use a 0% APR card, even if you're not paying interest because that utilization does matter. We'll talk more about that um, in a little bit at the end of this video when I tell you about you know not being denied for approvals. Not only can you get money back for, for cash, but you also get points for travel, for booking hotels, you know, for booking airline tickets and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different points, a lot of different perks, I meant to say, that you can get for using a credit card. So they are very beneficial, but like I was telling you, there are a lot of pitfalls that people do get caught up in credit card debt. So I want to also talk about networks and some of the different types of credit cards really quick. So right now here in the U.S., we have four major credit card networks, and that is American Express, Discover, Visa, and MasterCard. There are more, but those are the top four networks. And what I mean by networks is that they connect the merchants to the banks. So they're like the go-between middleman. So they connect the merchants to the bank. Now... Discover Card, which I have my cards right here to show y'all some examples. Discover Card and American Express are both networks and issuers. So that means that they are a bank and they are a network. So people can actually get a American Express logo on their credit card. I mean, say people, but banks can get, uh, or credit unions can get American Express logo on their credit card and it not be an actual American Express card. They just are using the network. For example, Navy Fed More Rewards Card, the Navy Fed American Express More Rewards Card. That's not a true American Express card. It's on the American Express network. I did a video about that as well. Discover, they are their own network. So if there are any cards that's issued outside of the Discover card that has the Discover logo, then they would just be the network card. Now, MasterCard and Visa, they are only network cards. So they only connect banks to merchants. That's all they do. They do not issue any credit. They do not issue any credit cards. They are just the network. So they are helping eBay, uh, and this is through Synchrony. So they're helping Synchrony connect with merchants. So I'm a merchant because I have a store. So when people come inside of my shop here, they're able to use their MasterCard because the network that I'm on will connect with that card's network for them to be able to pay me my money through their credit card, right? So that's how that works. So let's talk credit card types. Okay, so you have a regular credit card, no annual fee, just the basic regular credit cards. And then you have what they call charge card. So this is a charge card right here because this card right here in a traditional sense of the word, it should not have a preset spending limit or credit limit. So that means that this card right here is a card that I supposed to pay off every month 
regardless because it's a charge card so charge cards came around in like the 1950s and i think diners club was like the first charge card and credit cards when they first came out as charge cards they were only for rich people so you had some people up in new york like the diners club they wanted to treat their prestige people that want to go out and eat fine dining and all that and they don't want them to have to worry about carrying a wad of cash with them so they would give them an option to charge their meals or charge their wine or whatever it is that they're they're consuming they will allow them to charge those things and then pay them back with a bill at the end of the month or something like that so that's how it started and so american express jumped on that same bandwagon around 1958 and they can they made the first charge card so you might have seen the green american express this is the gold and they have a platinum now these cards right here they come with an annual fee now this one comes with a 250 dollars annual fee just to have this card now i bet you like now why would you pay that just to have a card <laughs> but they usually have perks that offsets the annual fee. So technically, if I use all of the credits that come with this card, I would only pay $10 a year to have the card. And as long as I'm using this card in the way that it's intended to be used, I will never uh, wash out of my uh, rewards. So what I mean by that, I could get Forex points on groceries, Forex points on, on restaurants, and I can get 3X points on travel and 1X points everywhere else. Now, as long as I ain't paying this card off every month, every time I use it, then the reward points that I get that I can redeem for uh, hotel stays and airline stays and all those different things, cash back as well, I will not be offsetting them by paying interest. Because even though this is a charge card that, I, that is you know, traditionally meant to be paid off every month, American Express knows that people carry a balance. So this card does have a actual limit if I was to carry a balance and it has an interest rate. But as long as I don't carry a balance, that doesn't kick in at all. I would just be using it and paying it back off. That's all. And I would just be getting the rewards and the points and that's all. They wouldn't be making any money off of me, but I would be making some money off of them. And that's how you want to treat these cards. Now, another type of card is a store or department store or retail store cards. Those are cards that can only be used at a specific location. Okay, so this is would be considered a store or retail card. This is my Walmart card that used to be issued by Synchrony Bank but it got bought by Capital One. So now Capital One issues this card for Walmart. Now I've had this card well over 10 years and this card, I can only use it in Walmart. So it doesn't have a Visa logo, doesn't have a MasterCard logo, American Express or Discover. So I'm only able to use a store card at the actual store. So you probably gone to Kohl's and Macy's and Old Navy and a whole bunch of other retail department stores and as soon as you're about to check out would you like to use your Coast card today or would you like to sign up for a Coast card today to get 20 percent off your purchase or something like that so those are your store cards now a lot of these cards can also come with the visa or mastercard logo it's just depending on when you apply for it where your credit is because like this card right here when i got this card i think my credit was around like 620 630 somewhere around in there so they didn't approve me for the mastercard logo uh walmart card they just gave me the basics so my credit wasn't terrible it was enough to get this card but it wasn't good enough to get the mastercard or the visa card logo one that i could use anywhere outside of walmart so if you're going to get a store branded card you'll want to get the card that has the logo of visa or mastercard or even American Express or Discover so that you can use it outside of that store. Because getting a store card just to use in that store is gonna cost you a lot of times to overspend in that store. And a lot of those department stores, it's just clothes or shoes, or you might can get some appliances and stuff like that. But when you're only able to spend it in that particular area, it can really limit what you can do with it and also cause you to overspend and especially and, and then buy stuff you really don't need at the end of the day. Not to mention store cards have the highest interest rate. A lot of them are going to run 29.99% off the top. They got the highest interest rate.
So when I was telling you about regular cars earlier, there are cars that are categorized now by what they do or what perk they offer. So to give you an example of that is the Navy Federal flagship rewards card. This card right here is a travel card. They have uh, listed this on their website as a travel card. So this card right here would be best used for me to book travel with because it's tailored to traveling. So it has like a TSA pre-check in it and all those type of things. And so if I use this card, I'm gonna benefit more using this card for my travel than versus this is my eBay MasterCard right here that will only give me a certain amount of points back if I actually shop on the eBay website. Now it's got the MasterCard logo so I can use it anywhere, but I'm gonna get more points because it's categorized for eBay. Just like I'm gonna get more points if I use this card for travel. Now the Discover It card that I have, this card right here, it has rotating categories. So that means uh, in each quarter. So January through March would be one uh, set different categories and then when april all the way up through june it'll be a different set of categories and it'll keep doing that every three months all the way out through the end of the year so this one will change based on what category is in those months so i remember back october november december of last year 2023 this card was uh letting you get 5x points back for your amazon.com and your target Dot com and target stores because they know that's around the time when people are going to do their most shopping so therefore you can really maximize some points then because people are going to be doing shopping i love the discover it card because you not only can get cash back for those everyday spend things but in your first year, you can also get a cash back match. So if I got $30 in cash back, they will match it at the at my anniversary with another $30, just for an example. So this one is a good one for that. But a lot of these cards can have a lot of benefit. Now with the Walmart card, see with this store card, it's not a good card because I can only use it to redeem for a cash back that I use at Walmart. I can't use it nowhere else but Walmart. So just keep that in mind when you get store branded cards that you can't use outside of that particular store. Now there are two other card types that I don't have an actual example for, but that is a secured credit card. A secured credit card is what you will use when you're first starting out either brand new to credit or you're rebuilding your credit after you have taken a credit hit. Okay, so secured card is just what it is. You're securing it with your own money to provide the actual credit limit. So that's why I was telling you earlier, most credit cards are not secured. When you are building a credit relationship, that's when you would want to secure money because a lot of times when you don't have any credit, it's hard to get approved. And then when your credit is bad, it's hard to get approved. So that is a way that you can get credit even when your credit is not ready, okay? So that's how a secured card would come into play. Another type of credit card is a fuel card. So there's a lot of cards out there that people use as fuel cards that only can be used at gas stations like your Shell uh, cars, your BP, Exxon's and all those type of cars. Those are fuel cars and usually they're just like these uh, store cars because you can only use them a lot of times at that particular gas station. So if you got a BP card, a BP branded card, you can only use it at a BP gas station. Um, and sometimes they are considered charge cars. So you'll have some fuel cars that are not branded to the actual fuel station, but they are charge cards. So they're giving you a 30 day grace period to pay it back off. A lot of people, when they're getting business credit cards, they may get fuel cards to actually build up their business credit. But well, that's for a whole nother topic. I'm just talking about personal credit right now. Fuel cards are another way to use credit cards as well. And for any of my history buffs out there that wants to get a deep history lesson on how credit cards started way back in the day, I mean, it goes all the way back to Mesopotamia. I hope I'm saying that right. Mesopotamia? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. It goes way back then where they had these uh, stone plates and all that kind of stuff. So if you're really interested in history, I'm going to link that video of a history of credit cards and some other uh, videos down in the description. And um, that way you can check it out. 
So if you have never gotten approved for a credit card or you want a credit card, let's talk about how to get approved for a credit card. So first of all, if you've never had credit before, you want to start building a relationship with an issuing bank that actually offer credit cards. That's a good way to start. I'm all about relationship banking. So if you don't have a good bank on deck, look at my video that I just done. I will link it above where you can start building a relationship with a bank or a credit union, preferably a local bank and a local credit union, something that's right there in your community. That's a good way to start. And then you want to start with a secured credit card. Make sure that this financial institution offers a secured credit card because that can be a way to get started with your credit, especially if you are brand new. Now, if you're not brand new to credit and you've had some credit issues in the past, the best thing to do is also to start with a secured credit card um, by building a relationship. I would still recommend doing it that way. But if you have had troubles in the past, and this is going to go for even if you're new, you want to make sure that you are paying your payments on time with all your credit that is being reported to your credit report. Because payment history counts for 35% of your score. I did a whole video breaking this down. So 35% of your score, when we're talking about the FICO score, that equals up to 192.5 points. So one late payment can drop your credit score over 100 points. So it's not worth it. So you want to make sure that you're paying all your creditors on time. Make sure you're paying your lenders on time every time, every month, no excuses. If you can't remember when things are due, you need to set a reminder in your phone or you need to set it up to at least pay the minimum payment every month on time on auto pay. You got to do this, guys. You got to get these things set up on automatic if you can't keep it up with everything in your mind because one late payment, like I said, can derail your credit. It can drop your score over 100 points and we don't want that. Next to paying your bills on time, you want to keep your credit utilization very low. So if you do have other credit cards and you're trying to get new credit cards, but you keep getting denied, make sure that you're keeping your credit utilization under 10% at all times if you're carrying a balance because you never want to look like you're living off your credit cards because a lot of people do. A lot of people live off their credit cards and it shows. It shows with maxed out credit cards and it shows with late payments because you're not having the income to support what you're spending. So you never want to look like you're in financial hardship or having a financial situation. So make sure that you're keeping your credit utilizations low. Credit utilization not only accounts for the plastic, but credit utilization is looked at when it comes to your installment loans as well. Uh, say you got a $10,000 personal loan last, uh, we're in May, so last May, but it's May now of 2024 and you still owe $9,000 on it. Well, it's been a whole year. Surely you should have knocked that down a little bit more than just $1,000. So you want to make sure that those balances are also coming down because that counts as utilization. They're trying to see where you were at and where you at now when it comes to granting you credit. Because sometimes when, you're, when that needle isn't moving, it might be because the interest rate is high, but it also could mean that you're not paying enough to move the needle. It could be a minimum payment type of thing. So make sure that you are making your payments and your balances are coming down. That just shows good financial stability when it comes to your credit. Another thing about credit card utilization, when you get a credit card and they give you say a limit of a thousand dollars, I'm not saying you can't use the whole thousand dollars. You just got to know when your bill is being reported to the credit bureau. So that's where your statement billing cycle is going to really come into play. So I made a video where I walked through on how to look at your uh, credit card statement that I will link in the description. And I'll try to link it in the cards if I don't have too many links. But you want to make sure that you pay attention to when your bill is actually being reported to the credit bureau if you were to use 100% of the utilization, meaning you matched your card out. As long as you pay it by that billing, then they will never know at the credit bureau. So that's very important. Another way that you can 
get approved is by keeping your inquiries low. You know, stop applying for credit so much. When you apply for a lot of credit within a short period of time, it screams this person might be in financial trouble, okay? And she's trying or he's trying to run up some debt and not pay it back, okay? So you wanna make sure that you keep your inquiries very low. A healthy amount of inquiries is three or less in over a two year period, okay? So I know some people say, well, you can do a hard inquiry every six months. You do not want to do that, okay? Because you got six months right here where you got inquiries and you got another six months of inquiries and you get another six months of inquiries. Inquiries stay on your credit two years, okay? They stay on your credit for two years. So you're just piling on inquiries. If you do it six months here and then six months here, that's not good because all those inquiries are just gonna keep following you for two years. And eventually those inquiries are gonna rack up and you don't supposed to have no more than two to three in a two year amount of time. So that means if I did an inquiry in 2023 or two or three in 2023, they're not going to go off until 2025. I should not be doing any more inquiries until after they fall off in 2025. That's going to show that I'm responsible with my credit. It's going to also maximize my credit score because I'm not applying for credit so often. And if I'm getting new credit, it's going to mess up my average age of credit. And you want your credit length of history to be as long as you can because that shows how long you have been responsible with your credit. So every time you get a new line, a new trade line of credit, that's making your average age of credit go down and also making your length of history go down. So you want you don't want that. So <laughs> so low inquiries guys, low inquiries and only apply for things that you truly and really need or will benefit you financially. Just don't be applying for everything just because somebody said it's easy or whatever. Really and truly make some credit goals. I just did a video on that too. Set some credit goals so that you are applying for the things you really need. It's all about being ready when the times come when you really, really need your credit. And if you're applying for everything and running up inquiries and all those type of things, you're running risk of late payments because you might forget about those things, those new debts you just occurred, and also missing payments. You don't want to miss any payments and you don't want to run up your utilization. It's not a good look, guys. It's not a good look. And to piggyback off that, lastly, you want to keep your debts low and your income high, okay? So low debt to income. When it comes to trying to get high limit credit cards, you don't want a ton of debt, all right? You don't want them saying that you owe everybody and your grandma. You do not want that. So you want to keep your debts low and your income high. Because even if you have, say you have an 800 credit score, if you owe everybody and your debt is up to here and your income is down here, you're going to still get denied because you can't afford it. All right. So we want to keep our income up here and our debts down here. We want to live way below our means at all times. That's how you show a good, strong credit profile. It's going to show up in your credit. I can't stress that enough. Good finances are going to equal excellent credit. And that's how they are looking at your score. Your score should reflect your good personal financial habits, period. Okay. So in conclusion, credit cards are a great tool. They can be very convenient for everyday spending. They got a lot of great cards out there, different uh, issuers, Citibanks, Chase, American Express. There's so many different types of credit cards out there for travelers, for, for, for anything. You name it, they got a credit card for it. But you also have to know that it comes with a price if you're not responsible. And I wouldn't be a responsible person on this channel if I did not tell you that too. So make sure that when you're getting these cards, that you're being responsible, that you're living below your means on these cards, you're only spending what you can afford to pay back, and you're only reaping the rewards and the benefits. All those different things that can come with these cards, but you're not going to get any of those things if you're carrying balances with maxed out credit, paying buttloads of interest to them. It's not going to do you any good. So we want to make sure that we are financially fit and, and we're healthy with our, with our finances, okay? Also, if you need any help with any of this, 
any a consultation all the information is below also you can join the credit ready program community as well as the course i'm always taking new members in it's a whole vibe guys we are right now we are on our book of the month we've been doing a book of a month since the beginning of the year so by the time this end uh 2024 we've been in red 12 personal finance books and also some personal uh self-help books as well so you want to make sure, guys, that if you need any help, that you are getting the help you need, all right? So all the information about that will be down below in the description, as well as the link to the uh, to the Creative Ready Program will be in the pinned comment. I really do appreciate all the love, and let me know how you like this video or didn't like this video, or did I leave out anything? Just give me a comment and let me know what's up. I really do appreciate y'all. See you in the next video.